Inside of inventory services, we can go to the maintenance menu and then company tank setup. That pulls up this screen. So I'll pull up a new store that I created in file maintenance. I'm going to set it the inventory services mode to forecasted. Down on the bottom right, I'm going to click on add. And I'm going to fill in my commodity class of onleaded. My commodity, my tank unit to measure, the tank size, the safe fill, which is normally 90. This says how much you can fill it up to. The shutdown, which is normally 5. That's when the tank runs out and cannot pump any more gas. I'm going to fill in the tank bucket so that it knows that this tank should be forecasted. If you don't fill in a tank bucket, let's say if you have kerosene there and you don't want to forecast it, just leave it at zero. Diameter is optional. The other field you'll need is simple threshold. This just is an indicator of when it gets this low, then an order should be generated. So if we have a 13.5 safe fill and a 750 shutdown, a good threshold might be 2,000 gallons. And that's the minimum that we need to fill to uh, for the tank setup. I'll go ahead and do a uh, diesel product as well, so we can see that. We'll make this a smaller tank, 10,000. It's still 90, still five, and we also want to forecast that. And we'll make this one at 1,800 for a threshold. After that, I'm just going to go up here and save. And now I've created my tanks for my new store of BP Oakwood. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go to the maintenance menu in the commodity forecast setup. We can retrieve our store. When you create a brand new store, you need to go to the toolbar and click this fill forecast data icon. That will bring over each of the commodities so that we can fill in our forecast data. So here on my clear diesel, I'm going to scroll over to my weekly sales. And I'm going to say that I have weekly sales of 15,000. And I'm going to look at my sales model for the last three weeks. Here's my seven day rolling average. Over here is my tank audit rule, uh, which specifies that the readings uh, that came in are within the range that they should be. So forecaster is going to predict your readings and the tank audit rule is going to validate if they're good or not. Down here I'm going to have weekly sales for my uh, my 87 product of 20,000. I'm going to also use a three week sales model and I'm going to use the same tank audit rule. Uh, for products that don't sell a lot of fuel, you might set up a 100 gallon rule to say if the reading that comes in is within 100 gallons, then this is a good reading. Otherwise, just use it for 50% of sales. You also have the option down here on the bottom left to specify what the sales are on a per day basis. It just took my 20,000 and divided by 7, but you can have different sales on Sunday versus Monday if you want to set that up. You can also have different sales, different time segments for different rushes that you may have throughout the day. So if you have a morning rush uh, or a lunch rush or a late evening rush, you can set up how much fuel you're selling on a percentage basis at each one of those rushes. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So the only thing I needed to do on the forecast setup was click the fill forecast data icon, fill in my weekly sales, and then make sure I have a tank audit rule in place. Uh, the other thing that we need to do, which is step three, if I go to my forecaster tab down here on the left, down here is where I set up the rules for how the order should be created. Um, here I've got a full trailer amount. I'm saying that when I create orders, my trailers are 8,500, and that trailer amount is for a specific gravity of 0.84, which is normally the unleaded product. So a full trailer amount is 8,500 gallons of 0.84 specific gravity. My target delivery hours, I'm going to try to keep a earliest and latest window, or what's referred to as a retain and runout window of three hours for it to when I go deliver. I'm going to create six orders in advance. So when I create my orders, it's automatically going to create six orders. And I always keep those six out there. And I haul four commodities on my trailers. Um, down here I have a max two compartments. The max two compartments says that the biggest two compartments of those four commodity of those four compartments are 5,800 gallons. The next thing I need to do is on each product line, I need to go down here and fill in the default shipper, the default supplier, account of if you wish, and I need to pick the forecast rule uh, for this specific product. If it's a high selling product, 
uh, the default rule is probably keep it target volume and I'm going to keep this one at 13.5 which happens to be the safe fill so I'm going to keep this one full and that's all I need to really fill in for that other than the specific gravity of that just to match is 0.84 when I go to my diesel I don't have quite as uh, much sales so I'm going to have a different rule I'm going to fill in my default shipper my default supplier this one I'm not going to keep it at, uh, at a target volume I'm going to trigger on that threshold so there's two schools of thought one is keep the tank full one is wait till it gets so low and then take an order so I'm gonna trigger on threshold and that threshold is 1800 so when I get down to 1800 I should be generating an order and I don't want to keep this one at 9000 I'm only gonna keep this one at 7000 so only fill it up to 7000 so I'm gonna trigger on threshold and only fill to 7000 and the specific gravity for diesel is 0.74 so since it's heavier, it's going to know that I'm only going to take 7,400 gallons instead of 8,500 gallons uh, for a full trailer, if I would take a full trailer. I'm going to go ahead and save that up top. And that's everything that I need in order to create orders for the forecaster. Um, the other step, which is to actually create the orders, I'm going to go up here to Tank Forecast Setup and Order Generation, I'm sorry, Order Forecast Review. and we're going to pull the store by pulling up the store in the order forecast review that simulates the forecaster running at a customer site we would actually have the forecaster running say every 30 minutes or something of that sort so by pulling up the order forecast review it simulates the forecaster running it's going to go out and verify that there's a current reading if there is a current reading then it's going to generate those orders Okay, so once we've filled in our data for, the onlet, for each of our products to say how we want the orders to be created, the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have readings filled in uh, so that the forecaster knows what the current level is so it knows where to create the orders. In order to enter your readings, you need to go to Fuel Dispatch, and we'll go to the Application menu, and down here I have Forecast Order Site Review. I'll go ahead and pull that store up. Down here I have 217, which is the day that we're working on. So I'm going to say that I've got a 13.5 uh, safe fill. I'm going to say my current reading at that tank is 5,000. And then my current reading for my 9,000 tank is maybe 34.50. And I'm going to go up top and save. Now that I have readings in, current readings for my two tanks, when I go back to my forecaster, it will go ahead and create those orders. So we'll switch back down to Inventory Services. We're going to go to Tank Forecast, Order Forecast Review, which is what I'm on now. Pull up our store. By pulling up the store, that simulates the forecaster running, and it's going to create those orders. There's an Orders tab so that I can review how many orders were created and what time they were created and what gallons are going to that store okay if we go to the orders projection tab that will show me here I have six orders I said I wanted six orders created it shows me that it's going to be there between 217 741 and 218 at 1441 that's my earliest and latest window for my delivery it's going to take 6,000 gallons of G87 and 2,500 gallons of clear my next order is going to go at 218 1641 between 219 1741 and I'm actually taking the same thing, 6,000 and 2,500. So you can see each of the orders that are created and the date and time that they're created for. If I click the Save Orders button up top right, and then kind of scroll over to the left there, we'll see the order numbers that are created. Now I have six orders in my database that I can go plan using my card plan or a planning worksheet. Okay, so here I see my new orders, 732, 733, down to 737. So those now are available in the, in the uh, card planner or planning worksheet to be planned on drivers. And that's the basics of what you need to do to set up your tanks, your forecast data, and create the orders.